Hello everyone, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. Have you ever wondered why there is a need for two enzymes to convert glucose into glucose 6-phosphate? In the cell, when glucose gets in, it is done through glute transporters. So, glucose transporters, when it allows glucose to get into the cell, it is phosphorylated at its sixth carbon done by glucokinase in the hepatic tissues and beta cells of pancreas while the same reaction is done by hexokinase in extra hepatic tissues other than the liver and beta cells of pancreas. So why do you need two enzymes to do the same thing that is phosphorylation of glucose at its sixth carbon. So note that whenever glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate, it is trapping that glucose inside the cell. That means glucose is committed to that cell. That's what is the purpose of phosphorylation inside the cell. Because glucose 6-phosphate simply it cannot come out of the cell. So, both glucokinase and exokinase, what it does by phosphorylating glucose at its 6th carbon, it is trapping that glucose in, in, inside the cell and making that glucose to commit itself for the cellular metabolism. Now, what happens to the glucose 6-phosphate which is down there? It all depends on what is the cellular needs at that moment. So, glucose 6-phosphate can be diverted into glycolysis and further it can go into uh, glycogen synthesis, it can go into acetyl CoA formation and acetyl CoA can be simply used for energy purpose of the cell or a glucose which is converted into pyruvate, pyruvate into acetyl CoA, it can be diverted into fatty acid synthesis, it can be diverted into cholesterol synthesis and also glucose 6-phosphate can go into pentose phosphate pathway and glucose 6-phosphate can be converted into glucose 1-phosphate which can be further diverted into glycoproteins, proteoglycons, conjugation process. Uh, by making it as UDP glucose or UDP glucuronate. So, there are a variety of reactions that glucose 6-phosphate can go in and all this is made possible by conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate done by two enzymes that is hexokinase in the extra hepatic tissues and beta cells of the pancreas other than these two all other tissues express hexokinase whereas the isoenzyme of exokinase which is called as glucokinase it is there in the liver and it is there in the beta cells of pancreas. Now let us look at what are the kinetic characteristics of glucokinase and hexokinase. First let us look at hexokinase. Hexokinase is a low Km enzyme also it is a low Vmax enzyme as you see here. So, the Km of hexokinase is 0.05 millimoles and if you want to understand how much is 0.05 millimoles in milligrams of glucose per 100 ml of blood. So, a rough estimate is 0.05 millimoles is equivalent to around 0.9 milligrams per deciliter of blood. So, how because 1 millimoles of glucose in the blood is equivalent to 18 milligrams per deciliter of glucose. So, going by that calculation, the Km of exokinase is 0.05 millimoles which is roughly 1 milligrams per deciliter. So, and then the Vmax of exokinase is also low. So, exokinase is a low Km and low Vmax enzyme that means it has got a higher affinity for glucose and it works at all blood glucose concentration. Why? Because our blood glucose even under fasting condition it is 70 to 99 milligram per deciliter. So, look at what is the Km of exokinase. It is just 1 milligram per deciliter and what is Km? Km is the substrate concentration at which enzyme reaches half of its maximum velocity. That means at just 1 milligrams of blood glucose per 100 ml, uh, hexokinase can reach half of its maximum velocity. Imagine uh, what, would the, what would be the velocity of hexokinase when our fasting glucose is 70 milligrams per deciliter even if you consider the lower end of fasting. That means 
exokinase is totally saturated. So, because if a KM is 0.05 millimoles or 1 milligrams per deciliter, to reach maximum velocity, all it takes is 5 times the KM. That is, just 5 milligrams per deciliter of blood, exokinase reaches its Vmax. Now, what is the fasting plasma glucose? Lower end is 70. So, it is totally saturated. So, point here is hexokinase in all enzymes at all blood glucose concentration in a normal person, it is totally saturated because it is a low Vmax enzyme. So, what is the purpose of hexokinase having a low KM and low Vmax? The purpose is it will make sure having hexokinase in the extra hepatic tissues will make sure these cells will get glucose at all blood glucose concentration and glucokinase is there to take care of that glucose which enters into the cell and is going to trap it in the form of glucose 6-phosphate and commit that glucose to uh, for the use of the cell. So that's why and so and also having a low Vmax exokinase will make sure that only that much amount of glucose which is necessary for the cell is phosphorylated and anything in excess of the need of that cell will not be phosphorylated and if the glucose is not phosphorylated at its sixth carbon, it will simply go back into the blood by the same glucose transporter that it has came in. So that means there will be redistribution of glucose from tissue to tissue depending on the needs of their glucose. So that is made possible only if hexokinase is a low Vmax enzyme because it will allow a tissue or a cell to use only that much amount of glucose which it needs. Anything in excess should be sent out. So that tissue distribution of glucose is possible only by having low Vmax exokinase and low KM exokinase will make sure tissue will get the glucose whatever it needs at all glucose concentration. That's the point. Coming to glucokinase. Glucokinase is a high KM and high Vmax enzyme meaning the KM of glucokinase is 5 millimoles. That means it's a higher glucose concentration. So at 5 millimoles, so glucokinase, it is going to convert that glucose into glucose 6-phosphate and then trap that glucose inside the cell and commit it to the cell. And also glucokinase is a high Vmax enzyme. So it's a high KM, meaning it has got lower affinity for glucose and high Vmax meaning it is a high capacity. So that means lower affinity but high capacity enzyme will make sure the tissues which express glucokinase that is liver and beta cells of pancreas will get that glucose inside only when there is plenty of glucose available in the blood which happens during absorptive state or the postprandial state which is after the meal. So after the meal when glucose levels are relatively high liver is going to allow glucose to get in by GLUT2 transporter and beta cells of pancreas will allow glucose to get in by GLUT2 transporter and inside the cells like liver and beta cells of pancreas, glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate for the reactions will go on. So what is the role of pancreatic beta cell here expressing glucokinase? So in response to higher glucose levels after meals, so glucose entering into the beta cells of pancreas converted into glucose 6-phosphate glucokinase enzyme. So glycolysis will go on and insulin will, re will be released in response to higher glucose by the beta cells of pancreas. What is the role of liver? So insulin is there in the blood, it is going to bind to insulin receptor including the liver's insulin receptor over there and glucose going into the liver. So it is converted into glucose 6-phosphate and it is diverted into variety of biosynthetic pathways. Make sure, know, make sure to know that insulin will enhance all the biosynthetic pathways like it is going to increase glycolysis, convert glucose into pyruvate and then it will make sure that pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA, TCA cycle goes on and when the TCA cycle is saturated, a uh, citrate comes out of mitochondria into the cytoplasm and it will be diverted into uh, a, a fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis and it will make sure uh, glucose 6-phosphate is going into pentose phosphate pathway and more and more NADPH is coming in. So to make fatty acids, to make cholesterol, NADPH is necessary. That's why insulin will promote 
pentose phosphate pathway by keeping glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogen is active it will make sure fatty acid synthesis going on cholesterol synthesis going on and also insulin will make sure glycogen is synthesis is going on overall my point here is by having glucokinase in the liver glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate as much glucose that is coming into the liver that much glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate and that is possible because glucokinase is having a high vmax so it is not going to saturate early so it's going on converting glucose into glucose 6 phosphate as long as it is coming in so since glucokinase is a high km enzyme mean, meaning it has a lower affinity it will allow only when glucose levels are relatively high in the blood once the glucose levels are kind of coming down to the normal range it, it is no longer converting glucose into glucose 6 phosphate in the liver so that means so any additional glucose or the excess glucose that is there in the blood glucokinase in the liver will take care of it and convert that into other metabolic products and store it as glycogen fatty acids cholesterol and all that and regulate the glucose to normal range so when there is a hyperglycemia after meals it will be brought down to the normal range because of the activity of glucokinase in the liver simply it is because high km and high vmax enzyme and the property of glucokinase in the beta cells of pancreas will will help uh, beta cells of pancreas to respond to the higher levels of glucose the, by releasing insulin so these are the properties of exokinase and glucokinase which will make sure tissues are getting uh, enough glucose for their metabolic needs and whenever there is excess glucose liver and beta cells of pancreas will make sure that glucose is maintained at a normal range that's the importance of glucokinase and exokinase and that's why there is a difference in the kinetic characteristics of glucokinase and exokinase enzymes in our body now let's move on to see what can be the mutations that may lead to different consequences uh, in our body so one of the well-known mutation of pancreatic glucokinase is the mutation in pancreatic glucokinase will lead to a disorder called modi type 2 Modi type 2 is maturity onset diabetes of the young type 2. So patients here can manifest with the classic signs of diabetes that is polyuria, polyphagia and uh, polydipsia or some patients may not show any signs of hyperglycemia although they will have higher levels of glucose in the blood. So symptomatic and asymptomatic presentation can be there in modi type 2 and it runs in the family coming to what what if there is a change in the kinetic characteristics of exokinase and glucokinase so let's consider so if there is a increase in the km of exokinase with the same vmax what will happen so that means exokinase simply becomes a lower affinity enzyme so it is not going to take up glucose that is there in the blood say in the skeletal muscle adipose tissue all these tissues which needs glucose since the exokinase is kind of mutated its km is increased rather than the lower km now it has a higher km means with the same vmax so even though there is a glucose down there in the blood it is not uh, converted into glucose 6-phosphate because it's, it became a high km enzyme that means lower affinity so with the lower affinity so glucose is not converted into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose stays back in the circulation and that leads to hyperglycemia because glucose is not used by the tissue now let's look at the opposite side if the hexokinase has got the same km but vmax is increased that means low km and high vmax enzyme so that means glucose getting in converted to glucose 6 phosphate and as long as glucose coming in it is all converted to glucose 6 phosphate and trapped because this enzyme has a high vmax now it's a hypothetical situation we are looking at so what will happen if the hexokinase has got low km and uh, high vmax so it will result in hypoglycemia because lot of glucose will be used by the tissues whether they need it or not it is all used so that may lead to hypoglycemia 
so this is the consequence of changes in the km and vmax with hexokinase that's why it is important for hexokinase to have a low km and low vmax thereby tissues will get glucose at all glucose concentration and they will get glucose only whatever they need anything that is in excess should be sent out that's that happens only if the hexokinase has got low vmax now let's go on to see what can happen if there is a change in the kinetic characteristics of glucokinase so glucokinase is a high km and high vmax enzyme now let's change what if glucokinase has a low km with same vmax that is high vmax so low km high vmax so what will happen so if the glucokinase has got low km it is a mutated one low km so it is going to take up all the glucose that is getting into the cell even at low glucose concentration like fasting time also at the fasting condition also uh, liver is going to convert glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and trap it inside the liver so liver will consume most of the glucose there and that may lead to hypoglycemia having a low km and high vmax glucokinase will lead to hypo glycemia now let's look at the apposite if the glucokinase has got the same km but lower vmax vmax is normally it is higher for glucokinase what if you lower it so higher km but lower vmax means gluco uh, liver may not be able to use all the glucose that is getting into the liver because enzyme has lowered its vmax that means it's going to saturate early and glucose is not converted into glucose 6 phosphate so it just sent, sent out of the liver into the blood and that will lead to hyperglycemia so like this changes in the kinetic characteristics will alter the glucose levels of our body and that may lead to metabolic consequences so this is all about uh, importance of glucokinase and hexokinase reaction I hope this video has helped you in understanding this very important concept, very first reaction in the uh, conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate and diverting that glucose 6-phosphate into all other reaction. Thank you for watching.